Lesson 6-6, six, six, trigonometric form of a complex number. So part one and part two are really algebra two review in that talking about complex numbers. You know what I mean when I say a complex number? Imaginary. Yeah, complex number is the official terminology when it has an imaginary part. So complex numbers, if you recall, are in this form a plus bi, so you have the real part plus the imaginary part, where a represents the real part, b represents the imaginary part. When we write, when we have a complex number like a plus bi, remember it can be written in the form a comma b. Last year in Algebra 2, we did exactly this. We graphed these complex numbers, and it's very much like graphing regular everyday rectangular coordinates. Okay, so when we look at A, um, 3 minus 4i, what would 3 minus 4i be as an ordered pair? Three minus four i is going to be the ordered pair. If we go real comma imaginary, it's going to be three comma negative four. You don't put the i in there. You're just doing the real part and the imaginary part. And then we graph this. Remember, we graph it just like an ordered pair. What we normally call the x-axis is represented uh, representative of our real axis and what we normally call the y-axis is representative of our imaginary axis. Okay, so in order to graph 3, negative 4, I think I'm gonna put I think I'm gonna put tick marks out to 5 in each direction. <coughs> Bless you. Okay, there we go. Where's point A going to be if I call 3, negative 4, point A? We're going to go where? Right 3, down 4. Thank you. Right 3, down 4. I'm going to call that point A. What about point B? It's negative 2 plus i. As an ordered pair, I'm going to call that negative 2 comma what? 1. All right. Imaginary value, imaginary value in front of i. Invisible value in front of i is the 1. And where is negative 2, 1 for point B? Left two, up one. Thoughts on the complex number 5i? Yeah, it's zero comma five. Exactly what I need you thinking there because we have no imaginary part, right? So if I rewrite this, I could rewrite it as zero plus 5i if you need that visual, and that is zero comma five. So where do we graph 0, 5? Left to right 0 and up 5 is going to be our point C. And what about D? Negative square root of 3. There's no imaginary number. No imaginary number. So what's that make my ordered pair? Yeah. Negative square root of 3, comma, 0. As in, this would be negative square root of 3 plus 0i. Okay. Which means if it's negative square root of 3, 0, it's going to stay on the real axis. What is approximately negative square root of 3? 1.6. I would have said 1.7. I think it's 1.732 is the number that comes to mind. So if I go negative 1.732, now in all honesty, does it matter if we go with my 1.7 or miles 1.6? 
Not on this graph, it does, it does it. I mean, in between negative one and negative two, closer to negative two. That's about the best I can do with the accuracy on this graph. Okay, what? I'm sorry, I answered your question. Slow. And then I turn the Moving on to part two. Moving on, moving on. Okay, part two, we also did this um, as part of algebra two. Absolute value of a complex number. Remember, officially, absolute value is the distance from the zero, right? So when we talk here, we're talking about absolute value of a complex number. Well, you've got an A and a B part. It's distance from the origin. Now, we have a formula here. In order to find the absolute value of a plus bi, we're going to do square root of a squared plus b squared. Okay, where a, of course, represents the real portion of the number and b represents the imaginary portion of the number. So, with that in mind, part a. 3 plus 4i. In order to find the absolute value, or in other words, the distance from the origin, we're going to do the square root of a squared plus b squared, which what does that mean for my problem? Square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared. Realizing when we do the 4 squared, it we just take the 4. We're not taking the i. We're just taking the coefficient of i. So 3 squared plus 4 squared is going to be 9 and 16, so 25. The square root of 25 is 5. If you can go that extra piece, please do. Okay. Okay. What about B? Absolute value of negative two i. I would technically argue you don't need a formula to find the absolute value of negative two i. If you think of absolute value as the definition, or as the definition of the distance from zero, how far would negative two i be from zero? Two units, right? I mean, technically it's two units down, just negative two i, but it is two units from zero. Now, does my abs does my formula agree with that? Absolute value of a squared, well, this would be an a value of 0 plus absolute value of negative 2 squared. Well, 0 squared is 0, negative 2 squared is 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. Okay. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the formula, just trying to help you make the connection. C. What about the absolute value of the negative square root of 2? Excuse me. I have yawns. What are we doing here? A is going to be negative square root of 2 squared plus B is going to be 0 squared. When you do the negative square root of 2 squared, realizing that's going to become 2, and it's just under a square root because you're when you add 0, that's not changing. And so hopefully that should make sense. D, you actually have to think about the math here. Negative 1 minus i square root of 5. What's my a value? A is 
the real part of negative 1, thank you, plus b squared. What's my b value? Negative square root of 5. Even though it's technically after the i, it's still our coefficient of i. We just don't tend to write the i after the square root. So it's negative square root of 5 squared. So negative 1 squared is 1. What about negative square root of 5 squared? That's going to be 5. And 1 and 5 is 6. six. Okay. That's review, guys, right? That's nothing new. That is just looking at the connection between complex numbers, reviewing what a complex number is, the fact that it's a plus bi, how do we graph it, and how do we find absolute value of it. Now, what we're going to focus on the rest is just the connection between the trig form of a complex number. So taking a complex number like a plus bi and being able to express it in a trig form. Okay? So part three down here has some formulas for you. So first of all, instead of z being, well, first of all, z, let me define this, z is, represents trig form of a complex number. Okay, that is the typical variable you will see there. Um, and in fact, you just see z in general with complex numbers, but definitely here. And normally we think a plus bi. Well, this time it's going to be more of an r cosine theta plus r sine theta r sine theta times i. I'm trying to decide how I want to say that there. But right here, guys, this is trig form of a complex number. Normally we think a plus bi. Well, notice what is defined here. a is defined to be r cosine theta, just like the x component. Okay. b is defined to be r sine theta. r, well, r is that it's the radius. It's a distance from zero. So it's going to be the absolute value of the number, an absolute value being the square root of a squared plus b squared. Okay? And then, side note, b over a equals tangent theta. Um, we're going to use that when we need to find theta. So similar to what we've done in the past when we were looking at the connection between rectangular coordinates and polar coordinates, same idea because our complex numbers are a lot like rectangular coordinates, okay? So as we look at A, they give us a complex number, 1 minus I. And we're being asked to write it, actually, I guess it never really says, but we're being asked to write it in trig form. So when we're being asked to write it in the trigonometric form, I'm looking for that form right there, which means I'm going to have to know R, and I'm going to have to know theta. Okay? So, z equals 1 minus i. Easiest is probably just like previously. How do we find r? Yeah, square root of a squared plus b squared. So in order to find r in this case, I'm going to do square root of a squared, which is 1 squared, plus, what's b? Negative 1. Negative 1, the coefficient, negative i. So negative 1 squared. 1 squared, square root of 1 squared plus negative 1 squared. Square root of 2. 1 squared is 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. We are at square root of 2. So that is your R value. Okay? Hold that thought. Don't lose that R. We'll have to come back and grab it here in a little bit. We also need to know theta. What's it say to use to find theta? Tangent theta equals B over A. So if I use the idea tangent theta e 
equals B over A. What's my B value? Negative 1 over what's my A value? 1. Which negative 1 over 1 is negative 1. So basically we're asking ourselves where does tangent equal negative 1? Now, as we talk about where does tangent equal negative 1, technically there's two places that tangent equals negative 1, yes? Because there's always two quadrants for a positive answer, two quadrants for a negative answer. However, I'm going to say I only want one of them. And here's my reasoning why. Where is the complex number 1 minus i? What quadrant is that going to be in? Four. That's going to be in quadrant 4, isn't it? Right 1, down 1. So when we do this tangent question, Quadrant 4 is a negative tangent quadrant, isn't it? All students take calculus. So it is one of the two places I would get a tangent quadrant, tangent answer. That's what I'm looking for. So I want to know when does tangent equal negative 1 in quadrant 4? Well, I would start with when does tangent equal 1? Pi over 4. That's straight from the chart, yes? So then we need to put that in quadrant 4. What is that in quadrant 4? In other words, what is our pi over 4 angle in quadrant 4? And that is? 7 pi over 4. 7 pi over 4. Is that the other piece of the puzzle I need there? Okay, in order to do this, we need to know R and we need to know theta. And so when we take that complex number of 1 minus i and we write it in trig form, I'm going to fill in that formula I have over there. R, which we already discovered was square root of 2 times cosine theta. What did we just say theta was? 7 pi over 4 plus i times sine of theta, so i times 7 pi over 4. Okay. That is your trig form of the complex number, 1 minus i. Seem a little familiar? It should. It's very similar to some of the other things we've done, isn't it? Now, the multiplying and dividing on the back side will be a little bit different, but let's, um, hmm. shall I pick and choose? I'm not going to have time for all of these, am I? Because I definitely want to get to the back side. Let's do one more from the front side real quick. Oh, let's just do B. Z equals negative 3i. Then we're going to go to the back side, so I want to make sure I don't run out of time. Because if my senior's missing tomorrow, I don't really, I want to make sure I get done what I need to today. First of all, what are you thinking about z equals negative 3i? Is your brain starting off and saying something else to you? Mine is. Negative 3i is the same as saying 0 minus 3i? Yes? Okay. I think I shouldn't have done this one. This one's going to be kind of easier, but oh well. R value, square root of a squared plus b squared. So square root of 0 squared plus negative 3 squared. Well, negative 3 squared is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. So my R value is 3. This piece right here is why I picked this problem. Tangent theta equals its b over a, just kind of like y over x. So what's our b? Our b value was negative 3 over our a value of 0. Hmm. 
So basically here at this point, we're asking when zero's in the denominator, when is tangent undefined? And if you remember, do you remember doing the tangent graph? It was increasing graph, asymptote. Increasing graph, asymptote. It almost looked like cubic graphs separated by asymptotes, right? So those asymptotes are where it's going to be undefined. What I would look at is, okay, think the whole sine over cosine, right? What are my options for when is sine over cosine? So in this case, when is cosine zero? And that happens two different times, right? However, we can also go here. Where is zero negative three I going to be? Left to right zero and down three. Hmm. What angle is that? 270, or if we put it in radians, 3 pi over 2, which it just so happens cosine is 0. When I talk about when is cosine 0, that happens at pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. So that was a little bit different. Maybe that wasn't the one I should have done, but I was looking for something quickly on the fly. Okay, write it in your trig form if you have it. Z equals 3 times cosine of 3 pi over 2 plus i times sine of 3 pi over 2. And then I want to quickly look at the back side and look at these multiplication and division formulas. Okay. Multiply and dividing complex numbers. Given z1 and z2. So given two, co two complex numbers in trig form. So r1 cosine theta 1 plus i sine theta 1 and then z2. Right here we've got our formulas, right? We've got a z1 times z2 and z1 divided by z2. Okay, we're going to use those formulas and we're going to fill in the math. You'll notice for multiplying we're going to multiply r1 times r2. And then we're going to do cosine of the thetas added plus i times sine of the thetas added. You'll notice a similar piece for division, except we're going to start off doing r1 divided by r2. Then we do our cosines and sines. Instead of those thetas being added, they are being subtracted. Okay? So let's try multiplying here. On A, if z is this, W is this. First thing we're going to find is ZW. Yes? So how do we find ZW, Z times W? First thing we have to do is we have to take R1 times R2. So what are my R values? R values are? Five and seven, and then it's going to be cosine of theta one plus theta two. What's theta one? Three pi over five. Three pi over five. Why am I starting to write Q one? Yikes. And theta two? Pi over three. Pi over three. So it's going to be cosine of three pi over five plus pi over three plus i times sine of 3 pi over 5 plus pi over 3. Basically, clean it up, and you've kind of got what they want there. Tricky math here. 5 times 7. We've got 35 times cosine of, did you guys do the math? 3 pi over 5 plus pi over 3, common denominator of 15, multiply by 3, I get 9 pi, multiply by 5, I get 5 pi, about 14 pi over 15. So cosine of 14 pi over 15 plus i times sine 
of 14 pi over 15. Okay, guys, I forget exactly how they ask it in homework, but this right here is trig form of the complex number. And I didn't think to look. So that's trig form. If they ask for trig form, they want this form right here. In trig form? Okay. Because I also have written down in my notes that if you do the calculation, like the calculator math, this is negative 34.24 plus 7.28i. Like in other words, if you multiply 35 times the cosine piece, you get negative 34.24. If you multiply 35 times the sine piece, you'd get the 7.28. So those are equivalent. Now, I am about out of time, darn it. You get the idea about z divided by w? You can follow z divided by w by watching the formula, I'm guessing. It's r1 divided by r2, so... 5 divided by 7, and then the difference here, when you do your cosines, you are subtracting. So 3 pi over 5 minus pi over 3. It's still plus, isn't it? Yeah. And then I sine, and then 3 pi over 5 minus pi over 3. I think you have enough to do the math homework. If not, come to me with your questions, okay? I'm going to keep writing this out. Um, your homework for tomorrow, for Wednesday, page 511, 1 through 6, 19 through 26. Hit me up if I didn't explain it well enough.